series of the murder for guys and this is my review and this is a movie that i definitely was uh very interested in i really was looking forward to seeing how this movie would turn out and uh today is actually my birthday and uh i figured that because of that i would actually do I i'm doing a double feature and i'm going to be seeing another movie a little bit later on but for this review i am going to be reviewing steven soderbergh's latest film that of course being logan lucky so Logan Lucky is essentially about, there is this curse, um, basically that has kind of, um, kind of scared the Logans for years where they kind of are in these dead end jobs that aren't really going anywhere. And when Channing Tatum's character, um, you know, when his character is suddenly fired from his job, he kind of gets the chance to, um, maybe make something of himself, and him and his brother decide to kind of start off this elaborate heist scheme, and they get, uh, they, they can't do without Daniel Craig's character, Joe Bain, and that's really all I'm gonna say. So, Logan Lucky, guys, like I said, I was definitely really interested in seeing how this movie were turned out for a couple of reasons. One, Steven Soderbergh, I think, is a very competent director. I mean, he has done some fantastic stuff, whether it been his incredible immaculate work on The Nick. I mean, his work on that was just phenomenal. He did such a great job on, um, that, you know, on that show. Um, I definitely do miss it, but... It's cool to see that he has, in fact, come back to movies, but also, the movie looked like a really fun film, and especially in August, when it kind of is like a, a dead zone for, you know, summer movies, it's just kind of like a sleepy end of the summer, I was really hoping this could be a nice hidden gem in there, and... For the most part, Logan Lucky is a really fun film. I definitely did enjoy this movie as a whole. Is it perfect? No, it actually does have quite a few problems, more than I was expecting, but I definitely did overall have a fun time with this movie. But let's just get into this movie starting off with the cast. And with a film like this, uh, this was probably the thing I was most looking forward to was the cast here. The cast of this movie is fantastic. There really isn't a single actor here that I thought gave a bad performance, and I really think everyone did a great job. First of all, let's talk about Chang Tam's character, Jimmy Logan. I really liked his character. You know, he's the family man in this movie, and he's got this job, and I thought definitely he did a really good job here. I really did like his character, um, and I thought his bonding with Adam Driver's character especially, who in my opinion is the most interesting character of the entire movie, uh, him and Clyde and Jimmy actually had really great chemistry. They really worked well, as you could tell. These two were in fact brothers, and there was a bit of a rivalry going on between these two. I don't really want to say much about it, but there was an interesting thing going on with the two of them, and I definitely really did enjoy seeing it. And these two just looked like they were having such a blast in this movie. They both did a fantastic job, and I really did love their character characters throughout the film, but easily the scene stealer of this entire film is Daniel Craig as Joe Bang, who I love it they're say, say introducing Daniel Craig as Joe Bang, because this might be the first movie that Daniel Craig's done where he doesn't do his, you know, traditional British accents, and thank God for it, because he absolutely kills it in this role. Joe Bang is this convict, and he is very good at his job. He has these really unconventional ways of pulling off heists and things like that, and he just had some fantastic one-liners in the movie. He was really fun to watch, and uh, I thought he definitely did do a really great job here, and it doesn't take too long for him to get into the story. I thought it was going to be a while before he actually did get involved, but he actually is in it pretty much from... Not even 20 minutes, I believe it was like 15 minutes in the movie, we're already into his stuff. He did a really great job, I really loved his character, he was so entertaining, so fun to watch, and definitely he's one of the best parts of this movie, without a doubt. And then the rest of the cast, I thought overall did a really good job, Riley Coe is really good for what she does here, I definitely did like her performance. Uh, Seth MacFarlane, believe it or not, is in this movie, he's completely unrecognizable, and I'm not gonna say much about his role but he was absolutely hilarious. I mean, every time he came on, I just started uh, gut-busting um, of laughter. I mean, everyone says that Seth MacFarlane kind of does the same thing. Well, let me tell you, you really have not seen Seth MacFarlane quite like you have in this movie. He was pretty damn great in this movie. I really did like his role here. And then, whoever played um, Shane Tatum's daughter, I, I really liked her. I thought she honestly did a really good job. I really loved um, her role in this movie, you know, sometimes kid actors, they can be very iffy in films, but not this time, I actually really liked his daughter in the movie, I thought their bond was actually really sweet, and 
She definitely had some really fun lines, but as a whole, the cast is fantastic. There's really not anyone here that I didn't like. I thought, honestly, everyone did a really good job, and uh, there really wasn't anyone that I wasn't impressed with. So now let's get into the directing and the writing, because here's where I start to have some more of the problems. The directing here is fine. You know, for the first two acts of the movie, it really doesn't take itself too seriously. It's just kind of a fun heist film, and I was completely fine with that. I was fine that it was actually just trying to be this fun heist film and when it does that it succeeds pretty well i mean i had a lot of fun definitely uh there are a lot of really entertaining scenes this movie that's what it seemed like this movie was trying to do that is until the third act the third act it tries to add a little bit more emotional stakes to this movie and Let's talk about that, because the main thing that really does hold this movie back for me is the writing. Um, like I said, the plot is pretty basic. It's just them trying to pull off this heist and, you know, trying to um, steal money, basically, from this, like, uh, you know, race car sort of thing, which, again, there's a lot of steps towards that. But unfortunately, I just didn't really feel much for the characters. I really didn't. And the movie wants you to. It really does. But when really thinking about it, there were scenes with Chang Tamer. I'm like, you know what? I really don't know a ton about his character. So when certain things are happening with him, I didn't feel emotionally invested. I didn't really feel, you know, really that connected to these characters as the movie really wanted me to. They were fine characters. They weren't bad, but I just felt they were a little bit underwritten. Adam Driver's character for me is really the only character that had some genuinely really good emotional stakes. He's got a good scene in the movie. Um, there's really only one scene where they give you some genuine um, emotional stakes, and it, it works pretty well, but other than that, they really don't do much with the characters. But then, like I said, the third act, it goes into this completely different direction, and they try to add more stakes to the movie, and it really didn't work. It just felt really tacked on to me. It felt like they, they just they didn't know when to end, and unfortunately, it really didn't work. Like I said, when the movie's just Daniel Craig, you know, um, just pulling off this elaborate scheme along with, you know, the two brothers. It's a lot of fun to watch. I definitely really did enjoy that, but I just felt that there was enough emotional stakes here. And Riley Co. let's get into her character, because as much as I did like her in the movie, she honestly felt kind of pointless. She really did. Like, I get it that she is their sister, but she didn't really play much of a role into this whatsoever. She was kind of on the outs most of the time. Most of the movie is spent with her trying to prep Chang Tatum's daughter for this pageant that she's in. That's what she's doing for, like, a lot of the movie. There's also this guy that's like making a pass at her i thought it was fun to watch but i just didn't really feel like she served much of a purpose here don't get me wrong i think she gave a good performance in the movie but really when thinking about it, i'm like you know what riley co could be completely removed from this story and it'd be exactly the same i really didn't feel like she added much to this movie at all unfortunately i i liked her in the movie and i just didn't feel like she really added anything um unfortunately i was a little bit disappointed Seth MacFarlane, as much as I did enjoy him, he was really underused in this movie. I felt like they could have used him a lot more, and there really isn't, like, an antagonist in this movie or anything, and they, it seemed like they were setting him up to be the antagonist, and they don't really do much with his character. He's in, like, maybe three scenes throughout the movie, and again, he's a lot of fun to watch, but they don't really do a ton with him, and... You know, after a certain point, you don't really think... I honestly forgot that he was in the movie. I really did, because they don't show him again till, like, much later into the film. And at that point, you just don't exactly care that much about his character. And the movie wants you to, but I just didn't. And I was not as into his character as I wanted to. Laugh-wise, however, this movie is pretty great. Now, I will say, it is not the laugh right that you think it's going to be, but the laughs are pretty consistent, particularly from Daniel Craig or from his brother. Brothers, uh, Brian Gleason and Jack Quaid, they were absolutely hilarious in the movie. Sam and Fish, I mean, talk about breakout potential here. I mean, these are two characters that I think we're going to be talking about at the end of the year. These are just st some of the best supporting characters I've seen in any comedy this year. They had me pretty much dying of laughter in any scene that they were in, and I really did love them. But I'm not going to lie, you guys, there are some scenes that really do fall flat in terms of laughter. Like, I'm like, oh, that was kind of funny, but it wasn't as funny as I was really hoping it would be. It seemed like they wanted to 
have laughs in there, but at the same time, there was a lot of serious moments, and I didn't feel like it really balanced the tone as well as it could have. It didn't know when to be serious, and it didn't know when to be silly. I just felt like it was kind of confused as to when it wanted to be a serious scene as to when it wanted to be a silly scene, and movies sometimes do that. This, unfortunately, is one of those films. So, again, the writing for me just wasn't as consistent as it could have been. I liked the overall story. I thought there were some really funny moments in there, and believe me, there are some hilarious scenes, particularly one involving prison and Game of Thrones. I'm not going to say much more than that, but it's easily one of the funniest scenes in the entire movie. I mean, I was dying of laughter in that scene. I thought there was some really funny stuff going on there, and I definitely really did enjoy it. Um, the cinematography here, I definitely really thought was good. I thought Peter Andrews did a really good job with the cinematography. I definitely really did um, enjoy it overall. And by the way, Peter Andrews is actually a pseudo name for Steven Soderbergh. It's, you know, pretty much all of the, the writing, the directing. Steven Steven Sober pretty much did everything in this movie, and he did a really good job with the cinematography. It's very basic, surprisingly, and, you know, this Steven Sober we're talking about, he always does these, like, incredible shots, and the movie's well shot, definitely, but it's not the amazing cinematography you're used to from him. I thought he did a good job, but I just thought the cinematography um, was a little bit basic. It really was. Not bad, just a little basic than I was expecting it to be. I thought the editing here, um, like I said, the editing really did go on a bit too long, especially towards the end of the movie. It just seemed like they didn't know when to end it. Like, there was a point where I thought the movie was going to end, and then it keeps going for, like, 20 more minutes. I'm like, all right, I just don't care anymore. End already. And it really did bother me in the end. Again, I really did enjoy the second act of this movie. And, I'm not, and the, it took a while for this movie to get going. It really did for me. It wasn't until they met Daniel Craig that I then got into the movie. But then the third act happened, and after a while, it just kind of kept going and going and going, and I really wasn't a huge fan of it, and I really thought the movie should just end it already, and it just seemed like they didn't know when to quit here. Also, at the end of the movie, they tried to set the movie up for a sequel, and it really felt very forced to me. I did not really think it worked at all. Uh, I thought it was interesting where they went, but again, the movie just kept going on and on and on, and the character especially, I just really didn't care about. Like I said, there's a character they introduced in the third act of the movie, and she just felt so out of place here. I didn't understand what the point of it was, and it seems like the movie, you know, I just don't think there's really much more you can do with the story. We got pretty much all we can out of the story, and I just don't feel that we really need it. I feel like it kind of just, you know, ran its course. We don't really need it. Overall, guys, Logan Lucky is a fun movie. I definitely did have a good time with it. Is it as good as I really want it to be? No. Is it the laugh ride that the trailer's made out to be? No. But it's a fun, you know, um, hour and 50-something minutes. I definitely did have a fun time with it. Like I said, at least for the first hour and 30 minutes, I definitely did enjoy Logan Lucky. It's just as it went on, I thought it got a little bit, um... Just, just a, It just went on a little bit too long, in my opinion. The characters aren't as interesting as I thought they could have been. But as a whole, guys, I definitely did enjoy Logan Lucky overall. And I am going to give Logan Lucky a B. So over, guys, we read Logan Lucky. Let me know if you guys saw this movie overall. Love your thoughts on it. Uh, like I said, I will be back a little bit later to review another movie that I will be seeing. Not going to tell you guys what it is yet. You guys can probably figure out what it is, but that's in my review. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll see you guys in my next video, and I will see you guys for that. Okay, bye.